Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, neighbors complained about the noise that was not there, so I made a real noise for them. The second story, customers said I was scanning too fast, so I scanned one item at a time until I was verbally told to continue all while slating her off to other customers. The third story, copy boy maliciously complies and copies a 400 page document, delaying office work and wasting paper and ink. On to the first story. Stop making noise after 10 p.m.? Alrighty then. Sitting on the sofa, listening to some music with the window open on the first warmish day of spring, a sudden realization hit me. I'm reviving a gloriously mundane case of malicious compliance and can share it with you. So, story time. Some time ago, four years and change to be precise, my best friend and I moved into a nice house with a cool inner garden and a tiny living room looking out into it. We, 20 female at that point, weren't really into partying, but as most university students still had some friends who would come over two to three times a month in twos or threes to hang out, bake, drink some wine and chill. Nice times. Once the weather got warm enough, we would sit in the garden and talk. And here you'll just have to take my word that we were only talking once the clock hit 22, as that's when the official night hours start round here. So no shouting, not even the quietest of music, no more than four people having a chill conversation in their own backyard. Working and studying, mind you, doesn't leave much time for such luxuries, so again that's no more than twice a month. Across the fence there lived a just no family, an older lady and her husband in one house, and her daughter, toddler, grandkids and two small obnoxious dogs barking all day every day in the next both sharing a garden bordering on ours. Two meter high concrete wall between us and them additionally. We had never met them in person until they started showing up at 2205 demanding that we go inside and close all windows so as not to be heard at all because otherwise we are a great awful inconvenience, super loud and an absolute breach of the rules. Not true, but the constant bickering, threats, and calls to the landlord spoiled any enjoyment of the garden in summer evenings for us. The final straw was when the husband appeared at 2202 so he had obviously been waiting to lecture us how we can be as loud as we want, but no later than 22, because in this community we have rules. Alrighty then, cue malicious compliance. Both of us enjoy a wide variety of musical genres, jazz, blues, swing, classical, folk, the occasional pop or rap track, you name it, and rock, and metal, abundantly. So for the next two years, every evening with nice enough weather, the time from 21 to 22 became the neighborhood musical education hour. And at this point, it ain't jazz either and is as loud as we d well please. We're having a blast, unwinding from the day, incorporating all cooking and showering into a GD dance routine. Then all music stops at the strike of 22. Yes, we have an actual church with bells that ring even at that time of the night. And on and on, evening after evening, till the leaves start to fall and it gets too cold to blast some nice Romstein or Pink Floyd or whatever through the huge A living room window. They tried to complain to the landlord about it too. But at this point, he told them that they got exactly what they asked for and to peeve right off. Only thing we hear from the other side of the fence nowadays is them screeching at their dogs. I swear to all the gods I don't believe in, if I hear that cookie sound once more, they're getting Marilyn Manson for a week straight. And they lived happily ever after. The end. Edit. I never went over to the Karens, although I could have complained right back at them as you suggested, and that's for one reason. I would much rather end a tiring day on an upbeat note than with a pointless and frustrating argument. There was lots of different music, but don't imagine only metal. Playing Welcome to the Jungle while the parents tried to herd the whole pack of kids and dogs inside was a singular treat for one. The Manson comment was a real-time reaction to one of them shouting after the dog while I was writing this, at around 21.30, so it's still in the cards for them. Having said that, I do have a lot more understanding for all types of frustration now that we're stuck at home. The music was not window rattlingly loud. I mean, I also have ears, and I'm not about to metaphorically burn my house down in order to watch their barn burn. The usual volume of music in my home is I can have a normal conversation with it as background. The MC volume is somewhat around I'd have to raise my voice a bit to have a conversation, but just a bit. Neither the other neighbors nor the landlord nor his 90-year-old mother, see below, had a problem with it. The house of the Karen neighbors is two gardens away from ours, basically. If they went inside and closed the windows, they wouldn't hear a peep. This only happens in the warmer months though, so everyone wants to enjoy the nice evenings outside, and given that they get annoyed at speaking, it's sure to bug them. The kids were toddlers when we first moved in. 
the music thing he started after two and a half years of them nagging. So by the time they were six-ish, and allowed to play in the garden even after 22 in the summer, it's not even dark out by that time anyway, so the music wasn't really messing with their sleep schedule. Also, still haven't heard them bopping along, sadly. If all goes according to plan academically, however, I'll hang around some more, enough time to see them into their prepubescent years. So, there's some hope left. Other Neighbors In the house above us lives the landlord's mother, an ancient lady of short temper, who could talk to her kid and have us out in no time if she felt we were being a pain in the A. Right when we moved in, we asked her whether we should be quiet by a particular time, and she answered, well, I take my hearing aids out at 20, so do whatever, it won't bother me. The Karens went to her on multiple occasions, to complain about us, and she gave them the same answer until they gave up. On the other side of the house, there's a taller building, two-story, with no garden and no windows into our garden, so from our point of view, a two-story wall. On top of that wall, there's a rooftop garden, a uh, terrace? Those neighbors stay up there till late at night, and although I can hear them, they also keep it to just conversations, so it doesn't bother me. We receive packages for each other, so we've all had plenty of opportunities to complain, had the noise been a problem. I know for a fact, however, that the Karens have called my landlord to complain about after hours talking at times, when no one was home at my place. So I guess conversation two houses over is still loud for that family. The next story is, I don't care about policy, you'll do it how I tell you to. I spent three years working for a UK supermarket chain. The people often mistake for a car manufacturer due to its name. And it was great. Honest to God, a really fun job with a great team, and I made many friends while I was there. That being said, anyone who shops there always has the same complaint. It's always about how fast the cashiers scan through the items. Now, please allow me to clarify before we go any further. The staff here are expected to scan X amount of items an hour. This is tracked. However, the entire design of the checkout area is designed as such to make this as easy as possible for both the colleague and the customer. The trolley slides into a notch at the end of the till, so it doesn't block the customer or force them to reach for items. The stores all have a bench at the end, and the idea is that the colleague scans the item, the customer puts said items back in the trolley, and then once all is done and paid for, the customer can go to the bench and pack at their own pace. The reason the store wants this to happen is because it allows them to serve more customers during the day and keep staffing down to a minimum. This is also why most stores have like six tills. But after seeing it in action, it makes total sense and is actually quicker for everyone. Now, on to the compliance. This was during the Christmas period, an extremely busy time of year, and as I was one of the fastest members of staff on the tills, I was asked to be till number one. Till number one never sets foot on the sales floor during working hours and has no restocking to do. Ironically, I hated working the tills, as I felt like I could have been more productive restocking, but business needs, so sure. I'm doing my thing ringing people up, making small talk, basically, everything's going good. Then a very miserable looking couple get to my till. Red flag one, bags are already set up in the trolley ready for packing. I pull their trolley over to place it in the correct position, and the woman duh duh does me and pulls it back. Red flag two, so I start scanning at my usual rate. After a few huffs and puffs, later she flips. C is customer, M is me. C, excuse me, can you not see I'm packing? You're going too fast. Me, apologies but it's store policy, I have to go this fast and you're meant to put it all back in the cart and pack over there. C. I'm not doing that, I've already started packing, so you'll just have to slow down. Me. Again, I apologize, but if I slow down, the queues build and other customers have to… C. Butting in. I do not give two SHs about anyone else, and your attitude is starting to get on my nerves. Slow it down, or I'll be having words with your manager. Me. Very well. From this point on, I would scan one item, lock my till and wait until this woman had put it in her bag and then stare at me. I would not scan the next item until she verbally told me she was ready. Every few items or so I would just look to other customers in the queue, stating, sorry all, some people just can't keep up. And I would love to serve all of you, but as this woman has stated, she doesn't care for our policies or for any of you. I will however open up another till so you can get home at some point today. Needless to say, the woman didn't take too kindly for it, and after she left she went to find the manager. I apologized to the next customers for taking so long, and the next woman said not to worry, she was in no rush, and was trying to keep composed the entire time as to not laugh. After this my manager came over and closed off my till. Once all the customers that were already on the till were served I went to the office. I knew what was coming, but wasn't too upset, as I did act like a T. I did not get any kind of disciplinary action taken, my manager just wanted to look like they had said something to me, because the woman was standing just outside the entrance to the staff area, and wanted to be updated by my manager after talking to me. The last story is, 
all documents need to be printed. This happened years ago when digital letters is not yet a norm. Our office usually receives letters and documents in PDF file. It'll later be printed and distributed accordingly. Boss would write a memo on what should be done to these letters and documents. We have a copier guy, office boy and cleaner. We'll call him copy boy, which his responsibility includes keeping our office clean, copying letters and documents and distributing them. Now, while we have a high number of documents circulating daily, not all of them are printed and copied. Only some of the really important documents get to be printed, copied and distributed. However, on this particular day, one of the bosses, let's call him Jerk Boss, is replacing our current boss, Big Boss, for several days during his business trip. Jerk Boss then gives instructions every morning to staffs, including to Copy Boy. Jerk Boss is known to be a control freak, micromanaging, and quite difficult to cope with. This makes everybody in the office is aware that Jerk Boss is going to make everyone's life difficult during Big Boss's business trip. One morning, Jerk Boss gives a memo to Copy Boy to print and distribute letters and documents. Quite a lot, 20 plus letters and documents in PDF file. Copy Boy prints them, began to copy them. Printer and copy are separate devices. Again, this is years ago. Copy Boy stumbled across one huge file that was instructed to be printed and copied and distributed. This was no normal file of 5 to 10 pages. It was a 20 pages report with additional 387 pages of data arrangement. This huge file was memoed to be copied to all recipients, around 14 people in this particular office. Copy Boy knows that Jerk Boss might have mistaken its memo, so he went to Jerk Boss to confirm, but then scolded with, Was it difficult for you to understand print and copy to all? Do I have to explain it again to you? He then adds, Don't you ever leave that job until it finishes. Q Copy Boy then just copied them all all 387 plus 20 pages of useless report and its attachment to all staff in the office. Copy Boy went to the stock room to take boxes of A4 copy paper just to finish this job, and he starts copying from 10 a.m. morning. Our copy paper is just a normal copier, not an industrial slash pro copier. It often jams and it took hours of Copy Boy to finish this job. Now this is the only copier in our office, and due to it used to copy that much, every other staff needs to wait until it finishes so they can use the copier. This stupid job not only was it useless, but it delays others' work as well. Jerk Boss is not amused why some of the needed documents are not ready yet, so he checks the copy boy and how he was surprised that the copy machine is being abused to copy 400 pages and 14 copies. He gets angry and scolded copy boy, but he simply replied, I did as instructed. All documents copied to all staff in this room. No need to explain me twice. Why don't you tell me? Copy boy says that he did, and you scolded me. And many staff are also in the same room when Jerk Boss scolded Copy Boy, so Jerk Boss cannot deny. Defeated, Jerk Boss instructed Copy Boy to stop copying the 400 pages file. It's been copied 12 times anyway, and tells him to continue with other files. This time, Jerk Boss rechecks the file he instructed to print to avoid such stupid mistake. Now, on every desk in that office stood a monument of Jerk Boss being a jerk. A 400 page document that were nowhere important, nor was it needed to be printed and copied. When Big Boss returned, he then saw those 400-page documents and finally learned on that incident. Jerk Boss was scolded by Big Boss later and often reminded again and again on how stupid and unprofessional his behavior was. Copy Machine is upgraded a couple of years later to a fully automated one. Nobody knows what to do with the document, and being an office document, you are not allowed to destroy them without supervision. I hope you love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.